Tonight, the Liberal crisis, Malcolm Turnbull to face a leadership vote as the climate change bill stalls. Freed, no thanks to Canberra, claims an Australian was kept hostage 11 months too long. And super termites threatening to cause hundreds of millions of dollars damage. Hello, I'm Tim Webster. Welcome to Tens Late News. And also tonight, what a crock. The snap strike caught on video. And first tonight, Malcolm Turnbull's days as opposition leader are almost certainly numbered, with a leadership challenge locked in for Tuesday. Tony Abbott is throwing his hat in the ring, and Joe Hockey is another likely contender. A party in turmoil. Liberal senators blatantly defying their leader's call to pass the carbon pollution reduction scheme. You did a deal with us. You made an agreement. You have ratted on the agreement. They've also ratted on their leader. If it comes to it, uh, I, I will be calling on a challenge, but... Um, and you'll stand? Yeah, yeah, I will. That challenge will happen Tuesday morning after Tony Abbott took a letter to the party whip signed by nine other Liberals calling for a spill. But Mr Turnbull's opponent may not be Mr Abbott. Instead, someone previously dubbed as one of his closest allies. Malcolm has my absolute unqualified support. Not anymore. The shadow treasurer has been sounding out voters online, signalling he's seriously considering abandoning his leader. There's talk of a Joe Hockey, Peter Dutton ticket, but several of the conservative Liberals have told 10 News they will not vote for Joe Hockey. Turnbull's determined to show courage under fire. There is no way I'm stepping down, resigning stepping backwards or anything like that. Neither will his party rebels. The catalyst to the mutiny collapsed this afternoon. It makes good sense to defer until after Copenhagen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, Malcolm Turnbull's closest friends are his political foes. Mr Turnbull has shown great courage and great determination. The Senate and the House of Representatives will return to Parliament on Monday to vote on the carbon pollution reduction scheme. If it's blocked or even delayed, the government is not ruling out a double dissolution. They can run, but they can't hide, Mr President. What would happen to the party if had to fight a double dissolution on this issue? The party would be... Look, we would be wiped out. Natasha Rex will be 10 News. Freed Australia hostage Nigel Brennan is now safely out of Somalia and receiving medical treatment. But it's claimed Canberra bungled his release and he could have been home months ago. It's a conversation no family should have to have. For Nigel Brennan's, it was a heartbreaking reality. In a phone call 12 months into his captivity in Somalia with Canadian colleague Amanda Lindhut, he pleaded with his brother Ham. Soon after, the Australian government told the family they were on their own. Having spent millions with no result, it could no longer help. Businessman Dick Smith raised money for the ransom and to pay a British security firm who finally negotiated the pair's release. In a discussion with the negotiator, he realised the government had hindered a quicker result by not turning to security experts from the start. And he said, Dick... The government has lost us 11 months. They could have died in that 11 months. It's uh, almost a wonder, miraculous, that they're alive. The government really let down the family, but it wasn't intentional. I have no doubt. I spoke to the people of the government. They were absolutely genuine, but out of their depth. It's a criticism the foreign minister dismisses. Within the very strict parameter of the Australian government not paying a ransom, we did everything that we reasonably and sensibly could in a very flexible way. Green Senator Bob Brown also provided money. He says it was an easy decision. Put that in comparison with a, a man and a woman separately chained to the floor, being beaten, and able, of course, to be killed at any time, and um, a, a few percentage of your salary over a period of time is pretty small pickings. Nigel Brennan and Amanda Lindhut are in hospital in Kenya tonight ahead of their return home. Eddie Meyer, 10 News. After a two-week manhunt, a man has now been charged with murdering his father and sister. The dramatic arrest followed a lucky tip-off. After almost three weeks on the run, police finally caught up with Anthony Waterlow. He was spotted at a service station buying groceries around 10am on the northern outskirts of Sydney. We just asked him what he was doing and he 
said nothing. I said, I'm just resting. And then um, he came in to buy a couple of groceries. He said he was camping up the bush. You feel a bit creepy, but other than that... A customer recognised him, still wearing the same clothes since the night his sister and father were killed. Police were called and caught up with him a few kilometres down the road. After a short pursuit, he stopped, produced a knife, which he uh, threatened self-harm. Waterloo was arrested and has spent the afternoon being interviewed by detectives. He's lucid, he's uh, cooperating um, and... Um, there doesn't appear to be any issues at this stage. It ends a manhunt for the 42-year-old who was seen leaving his sister's house the night she and her father were killed. Sydney author Chloe Waterlow had three children. Her husband, Ben Houston, was in London at the time of the killings and had to make the heartbreaking journey home to make arrangements for their funerals, which were held last week. He and other surviving members of the family have since been kept in a safe place. They have been informed. Um, at this stage, I'm sure they're relieved. Anthony Waterlow is due in court tomorrow. Evan Batten, 10 News. A teenager has told of bizarre side effects after being struck by lightning. Doctors are amazed she's alive and hope to learn from her freak accident. Ashley Alshar yesterday got the shock of her life. So I bent down and sharp pain went into the back of my neck and I felt a big zap and it felt like it was all going into the one spot at once and then it went straight down, my, straight through the rest of my body. The 17-year-old was thrown to the ground as she was attempting to connect a hose to a downpipe to help fill the family pool during the electrical storm. She was just lying there crying. She just didn't know what was happening to her. Ashley was able to make it inside the house and raise the alarm, but within minutes she couldn't move. Her lips went bright, bright, bright red, then all of a sudden they just burst and her skin just peeled off and then they just become really, really dry and cracked. Paramedics stabilising her before taking her to hospital where she's been under observation. Doctors keen to learn what they can from a lightning strike survivor. She feel unlucky when it happens though, but it's much better when you're still here. Clean-ups from the ferocious storm front continued today. A Melbourne shopping centre reopened after a partial roof collapse left a damage bill into the millions. A minority of store owners lamented not being able to trade four weeks before Christmas. It's a 12-hour trading day, the busiest day of the week for us, and uh, we've, we can't open at all today. Alicia McMillan, 10 News. Two giant pandas destined for the Adelaide Zoo are finally on their way to Australia. Wang Wang and Fu Ni were packed into travel cages. The staff at the Sichuan Breeding Centre said goodbye to them. I was a bit anxious this morning, not knowing how it was going to go, but now that they're up, up there now on the truck, very, very happy and excited. The pair will be loaded onto a cargo plane tonight to start their six-hour journey down under. It'll take about a month for the pandas to settle into their new home and it is hoped they'll produce some offspring before too long. Still to come, lucky escape as Jaws the Croc takes on a junior ranger. And the super termite threatening a national disaster. Here we go. Summer on 10 never looked so good. Celebrate life with colour this spring for the brightest brands in fashion, including Verge, Moss and Spy, Verse, Mella Purdy, The Ark, Nine by Joe Sapa and Obi. Summer fun is at Yell Tour. Pop in for Christmas savings at your Big Bargain Bottle Shops. Mystery Creek New Zealand Sav Blanc Big Bargain $95 a case. Corona with bonus cap $49.99. Catalogue out now. Locally owned and operated, there's a Big Bargain Bottle Shop near you. Get outdoors with Mountain Creek. For tents and camping accessories, gazebos, kayaks and more, they are your one-stop outdoor shop. You can make the most of your leisure time with all the good gear and good advice from Mountain Creek Outdoors in Bathurst Street next to Book City. Ski gear, snow surf skate, just different.
You're watching 10 News. A ranger has narrowly escaped the clutches of a four-metre crocodile. The close encounter was caught on video by shocked tourists during the once-in-a-lifetime show. Uh, he pulled the, the cool as a cucumber line out, so that was pretty impressive. He, uh, yeah, he just kept going on with the show like it never even happened, but uh, I'm sure on the inside he was uh, feeling a bit different to what he was letting on. Yeah, Come well, on. they call him Jaws, and he has a fierce reputation for testing the skills of the junior rangers. The world's most destructive termite has been discovered in Sydney, with experts warning it could cause damage worth hundreds of millions of dollars. So far, the infestation is contained to the one house, and there'll be drastic action to stop it spreading. Matt Grange was attracted to the wooden features of his Ramsgate heritage home when he bought it six years ago, but unfortunately, so was an exotic termite that began a mission to destroy it. I did a bit of renovating and I just found the little pests and next thing you know I've got to get it fumigated. Pest inspectors followed the telltale trails of red dust to identify the hungry culprit. And they did hunt down a soldier termite from what they said and it was that was in the beams itself mm -hmm. supporting the walls. It was sent to the forestry department then biosecurity when it became clear this was no ordinary bug. It was the West Indian drywood termite. And this is the creature that's caused all the problem. This tiny little termite less than one centimetre long but it's been described as the world's most destructive. It, it could cost homeowners hundreds of millions of dollars if there's serious endemic outbreaks in Australia. It's believed the colony was brought to Australia by the previous homeowners in a wooden picture frame from Brazil. The government is so concerned by the quarantine breach, it's paying for the home to be fumigated. To wrap the house in a large tarp and, and pump a chemical in and stand guard for 24 hours, it's, it's unknown to us before. Spare a thought for the neighbours. Pretty shocked. Um, and frightened in a way as well. But they should be concerned because these termites do uh, swarm right, and they can float along with the wind. The last infestation in Sydney was at Hornsby in the 1940s when the mite spread to nine homes. The creatures have also been detected in parts of Queensland and Western Australia. Amber Muir, 10 News. Business and Finance News now with Martin Lakos at Macquarie Private Wealth. And Martin, well, basically, dire straits in Dubai led to a dire time here for our stock market. Yeah, good evening, Tim. Yes, indeed. In fact, our market was down about 3%, which is about the sixth largest fall for this year so far. And it all stems from Dubai World, the state-owned property developer, which has asked for a rescheduling of its debt due in uh, mid-December, or part of its debt. And the market's getting a bit nervous whether, in fact, that's going to be a default. The key to that is that, in fact, there's quite a lot of banks, particularly UK banks, that have got exposures. And last night, the UK market was down heavily, largely with banks being down between 4 and 8%. That really set up our market for a fall today, and a fall we did have, with our banks down about 3% as well, dragging the rest of the market down also. We've got to watch the, uh, the, how this uh, develops. Um, Abu Dhabi, the parent emirate that might be able to bail out Dubai or Dubai World or help to bail it out, have got about in excess of 600 billion US dollars in assets. So it's unlikely a default will take place, but a certainly a major rescheduling is due. And most uh, market players are waiting to see how the US reacts when they return from Thanksgiving next week. OK, Martin, thank you. Now to the market in a bit of detail and the all ordinaries, well, down almost 3% at the closing bell. The NAB was the hardest hit of the banks, the big ones, and BHP Billiton pretty much the same among the global miners. Telstra was down, but not nearly as much as the other stocks. The Australian dollar, well, it's buying in 90 US cents. Gold, stronger than ever. And oil, $75 per barrel. Ireland's Catholic Church has apologised after a report showed it covered up child sex abuse for decades. The Dublin di Archdiocese admits it put the interests of the church before the victims. Cover-up and connivance, a culture of concealment, were found in the Catholic Church and in its relationship with the police, who should have been investigating allegations of child abuse. Some of those who suffered gave their reactions. This report is a shocking indictment on the Catholic Church in Dublin. Its publication may bring closure for some victims. It may also serve as the only justice some victims ever receive. But its publication, if not acted upon, will have been a wasted opportunity to raise standards <coughs> of child protection in this country. The institution came before the welfare of the children of this country and all their denials are now proved to be false.
The report, covering 30 years in the Diocese of Dublin, found that four archbishops did not hand over information on abusers. One priest has admitted sexually abusing more than 100 children. The Irish government has level, promised to bring paedophile priests to justice for these shocking crimes. I read it. As I read it, I felt a growing sense of revulsion and anger. Revulsion at the horrible ev evil acts committed against young children. Anger at how those children were then dealt with and how often abusers were left free to abuse. The current Archbishop of Dublin responded for the Catholic Church. I offer to each and every survivor my apology, my sorrow and my shame for what happened. But I'm aware that no words of apology will ever be sufficient. Some abuse survivors are now calling for Pope Benedict to go to Ireland to apologise in person to the Irish people when he visits the UK next year. It would echo the Pope's healing mission last year when he apologised to victims of abuse by priests in America. Next, cool, calm and collecting kudos. The couple who gatecrashed a presidential party and got away with it. And why Jeffrey Edelston and his young bride need advice from Rupert Murdoch. In Ted's big Saturday comedy, when you inherit $40 billion, what do you do? Whatever you want. Thanks for stopping, buddy. This is uh, unbelievable. Adam Sandler is Mr. Deeds. 6.30 Saturday on 10. Ski gear, snow surf skate, just different. Did you know you have a choice where you take your vehicle for a service or maintaining your new car warranty? At Specialist Car Centre, we are factory trained Renault technicians and specialise in Hyundai, Honda, Subaru and other makes. We understand the intricate uniqueness of each individual vehicle and use only original equipment and genuine factory parts. So be assured your car will always receive specialist care. You have a choice. Specialist Car Centre Hobart. On Meet the Press Sunday morning at 8, the opposition's Turnbull turmoil, Liberal power player Kevin Andrews. I think this sends a clear message and I would hope that the message is here. Now ladies, if you're looking for the ultimate Christmas present, hint for hubby, you don't need to look any further. A $3 million display of jewels by world-renowned Dutch diamond house, Royal Asher, has been flown to Australia. The collection includes three stars of Africa, which feature up to 100 tiny diamonds floating in a fluid-filled dome. It's a ring which is based on the snow globe idea. It has a natural sapphire dome with a silicon gel inside where you actually see the diamonds freely float. And fellas, the rings will set you back between six and $10,000 each. Bit of pressure. Rupert Murdoch is being sought for special advice ahead of Jeffrey Edelston's celebrity wedding. It follows the disgraced former doctor making a promise to his bride-to-be. The happy couple kissed, held hands and laughed. Are you a bit <laughs> nervous? No, I'm excited. I can't wait. I'll get nervous that day. 26-year-old Bryn Gordon getting her wish, her previously coy 66-year-old husband-to-be, now saying he's happy to have children, but may seek tips from another older dad. I'm trying to get in touch with Rupert Murdoch to find out <laughs> what, what happens. Complete with rose between his teeth, Dr Edelston swept her off her feet with an over-the-top proposal. While he's used to fame, she's still getting used to the spotlight. Were you prepared for the amount of scrutiny that you've been under? How can you prepare for that? <laughs> but the bubbly blonde might consider a career in TV. I would love to if anyone would have me. <laughs> and she's getting used to the Aussie lingo, especially when it comes to supporting her beau's favourite footy team, Carlton. Well, you've done that quite well. He embarrasses me. <laughs> <laughs>
Behind these doors is where the happy couple will tie the knot and while the exact details remain secret, an army is working to transform the ballroom for Sunday's star-studded event. The only thing the blushing bride would give away involved her footwear. Okay, Wearing heels or flats on Sunday? Heels. I'm always in heels. I run in my heels. Really? Alan Rascal, 10 News. <laughs> White House officials have been left red-faced after a smooth-talking couple managed to gate-crash a presidential party. Now the reality show wannabes could be facing charges. Mr and Mrs Salahi. Give them an Oscar for nothing in their demeanour betrayed that this was the most outrageous case of gate-crashing in American history. For the Salahis, two aspiring reality TV stars were most definitely not on the guest list. This wasn't any old party, this was the social event of the year, the Obama's first state dinner. The downfall of the Salahis was their desire to boast. On Facebook, Tarika Mikhail posted photos. Here posing with a grinning Vice President, Joe Biden. Next with the White House Chief of Staff. Even with the very guards, who should have thrown them out. The White House says it is still trying to discover how the Salahis so brazenly breached the world's greatest security arrangements. And for the fabled Secret Service, it is even more embarrassing because they only heard about the incident from the media and from those photos on Facebook. I feel so good. Ironically, two months ago, Mikhail spoke about just how easy it was to gain access to the president. President Obama has made it very accessible for anyone to visit the White House you know, the White House. General and Mrs. Powell. As America's most famous names stepped forward, it seems the Salahi simply bluffed their way in. But gate crashers beware. The couple may be charged with trespassing or with lying to the Secret Service. Robert Moore, 10 News. Sports tonight next with Rob Canning and the Aussies are now doing it pretty easy against the Windies. That's right, the tourist big name batsman failed to stand up this afternoon. We'll bring you all the highlights very shortly. As the Aussie Quicks tears through the top order. Major news coming out of the jumps racing industry. We will be fighting and combating this decision. Make no mistake about it. And Luke Ball jets out for Arizona. We'll tell you why. Your mission, to watch one of the best action sequels ever made. Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 2, 8.30 Saturday on 10. It's rare, it's unique, it's on the waterfront and it could be yours. Don't miss your chance to secure one of five fully self-contained luxury waterfront cottages. Individual auctions will be held on site this Saturday at 12 noon or Convict Road, Orford. For further information, contact Peter Bignold today. for just $15 a week. Now, the weather in a trough will generate some warm, gusty winds in Queensland and New South Wales before causing some storms near the ranges. A front and low will bring some patchy rain and storms to Victoria, Tasmania and southern South Australia. Winds in South Australia will be strong and a high will bring a dry day to WA as these northeasterly winds warm up the west. So tomorrow, Cairns mostly cloudy in 31, Brisbane and Darwin late thunder, Sydney, Alice Springs and Perth all sunny and warm, Canberra windy in 28, Melbourne some showers in 23, Hobart rain in just 14 degrees, Adelaide windy with showers in 22. That's the latest from 10 News Sports tonight with Rob Canning is next. I'm Tim Webster. Have a great weekend. Good night.